Howdy, Team Yap listeners. Uh, this is your co-host, Chris. And I am your other co-host, Emily. I was going to say my last name, but <laughs> I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because my last name's on the thing. Yeah, um, Emily Brewer. We're already nice and doxxed. Yes. Um, yeah, here's, welcome back. Uh, episode eight of Team Yap. Going at it strong um, over the course to believe of many it's been weeks. Eight. Eight episodes. Eight episodes over the many months at this point. Long, multiple, multiple months we've yeah. been going on this for. I still, it's hard kind of for me to believe that this all started. You just coming up to me one day in the studio room, just like, hey, you want to take our Pokemon talk into the podcast mics? And it now here we are. Definitely an excuse to get paid to talk about Pokemon. What are so. you talking about? <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. Um, would never do something like that. <laughs> uh, I... Yeah, I've, I've been having a blast, and now here we are with our second movie review episode. Very excited. For uh, Pokemon 2000, The Power of One, Wh- as a subtitle, which was uh, blew through the movie, and I completely forgot about that. I didn't know about it, but then I am, like, obsessed with the... Um, opening like title animation and um so of course i saw that it was called the power of one there yep but um just the the dope old school graphics of like with the words like really gets me so big 3d letters slowly moving into screen with the light coming from behind Mm -hmm. very classic the, the music building up yep so we won't jump immediately into our movie review. We'll, uh, we we'll warm up a little bit. We got a yap. Um, and um, I will let Chris talk about something that I was just informed about today, which is quite sad, honestly. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to open this one on a bit of a down note and coming in a bit late to this one. Uh, Rachel Lillis, the English voice actor for misty and jesse and if there are any other roles that she took on throughout pokemon you know um i'm not aware of them at the moment but um she unfortunately passed away uh, a little over two weeks ago yeah and yeah that is something that I, i had been generally aware of it and i mean we we filmed our previous episode prior to this happening about two days so before we, she passed so we didn't have a chance to uh, talk on it at all but um yeah i had reminded myself of it as i was watching last night i was just going through and uh, on one of the scenes i was looking through the voice actors just looking at the names and i saw and i remembered like oh so that made it a bit hard to start uh the movie but um just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that and just remember and be grateful for all of the I mean, the, the wonderful, uh, the wonderful part that she played in, in like my upbringing and so many people's upbringing in those roles, like. Yeah. I mean, she was, um, when people think about Pokemon, um, at least when I think about Pokemon, I think about the classic trio, yeah. Ash, Misty, and Brock. It's, it's the original gang, and then it's Team Rocket. Yes. And I did not know that she voiced Misty and Jesse, um, which is a testament to the talent of um, voice actors and actresses. For sure. I Until recently, I wouldn't have been able to... I wouldn't have been able to peg that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's a that was very sad. I mean, she's quite young. She's only fifty five. Um, oh damn! She, yeah, she passed away from um, cancer. Um, so yeah, um, it, life is life is delicate and sometimes way shorter than we want it to be, and um, it's really unfortunate, um, especially when somebody plays such a big role in so many people's lives. So right. Um, yeah, we she will be missed, that's for sure. Um on a lighter note, unless there's more you wanted to talk about in that regard. No, that was about it. I just yeah, wanted to acknowledge that. Give that some time to breathe. And, totally. Yeah. Um yeah, and, and sorry to like start the episode out on that, but it's um it's a big thing. Yeah, good so, pay our respects and yeah. Um we 
does she voice Misty like the whole tenure of Misty being a character? I will look right now because I feel like I'd heard and given this it can be the same voice actress anyway and this could still happen but like I feel like there was a distinctive shift in her voice over time but that could also just be the quality of technology or recordings and stuff like that acting sure yep Uh while Chris looks that up um another and, and the only reason why I um even knew some of these people's names is because um, I think both of us watched the movie on Amazon Prime, which shows like whatever scenes scene is currently happening in the movie. Like it'll it'll talk or it will show you in the drop down menu, like the actors and actresses that are featured in it. And um, I learned that Meowth is voiced by a woman. Yes. And I did not know that. That blew me away. (laughs) Um, Again, another testament to the talent of voice actors and actresses. Um, Just really incredible how these people can like change and manipulate their voices into distinctive characters. So absolutely. Like immediately what comes to mind is um, Keith Silverstein. He plays characters like uh, anyone familiar with Genshin Impact, he plays Zhong Li, a very like uh, a very old played character, very old wise god like character. And then he also plays Torbjorn from Overwatch, who is a short. He's a he's an engineer, um, a short Swedish engineer, mm-hmm. uh, very much not had all the same kind of character. And I did not know for the longest yeah. time that that was Keith Silverstein uh, as Torbjorn. Um, but Rachel Lillis, she was Misty and Jesse in the first eight seasons okay. of the English dub. So that. So quite a while then. Quite a run. Yep. Um, all right. Um, well, in other news, um, it has, it is, officially been announced that Gigantamax and Dynamax is a feature in Pokemon Go. Yep. Those will be on their way. Um, have seen Dynamax Pokemon via like different released promotions information. Yeah. Um, nothing specifically about Gigantamax yet, but I imagine they'll probably save that for like halfway through the season yeah. or it'll be its own special event to start with probably Gigantamax Pikachu and Charizard. Sure. Maybe, I'm sure. Well, it's also hilarious because like, they did. They officially announced it, but like weeks before they officially announced it, they put that icon in right. the game. So it's like if and we already talked about this, but it's like if you know what that is, yeah. you knew it was if, coming. If it was Pokemon, not a surprise. If you're uh, even just a casual, but in terms of Pokemon as a whole, then yeah, you're gonna know. But mm-hmm. plain plain old Go players might not. Yes. Um, and then one of the things that. Um, is new is shiny. I mean, uh, both of them will be shiny, Zamazenta and Zacian, but one of them has been the the schedule for September has been released, and yes, one of and them is Zacian's on the map. First. Zacian. So, and that is that officially will be shiny available. So that is exciting. I'm I found an infographic earlier that, of course, I is gone now. So I can't reference that, but there's some cool stuff coming up. Um, Wulu can be shiny score. Yes. Um, Squovit. Is that the name of the Pokemon? Can be shiny. Um, And yeah, so it looks looking like a good month for Pokemon go. And I'm very excited for that. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, finally getting the Gen 8 starters. Yes. After yes. being, I, well, this I was always it. in their back pocket for I, sure. I get it. And we knew like if they're going to do a Dynamax thing, yeah. that's when they're going to bring in the, but it still just feels so weird for me to skip over them. It is Gen odd. Starter, it is least, odd. Like at least put in the starters. Of the I'm game. also tired of seeing the Gen 9 starters. Yeah. And at least like give us the shinies. Yeah. Well, that, that's exactly it. If I could have a shiny, I wouldn't care if they, if I saw them all the time. Yeah. Um, but I don't like that. I, I don't like how they keep things shiny locked until there are relevant events. I mean, that's how they keep the game relevant. They trickle feed you like the shit that you want so mm-hmm. that you'll 
keep playing and keep coming back. Um, but I hate it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, um, looking forward to it. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see how these new, um, these Dynamax encounters work. Yep. Yep. I think it's going to probably be similar to raids. I haven't um, actually or somebody, seen. Or I don't know if they'll make like dens. Um, I know there's going to be specific, like they're, they're adding in power spots, okay. which are their own thing. So maybe that'll be. And that's where the, like the max raid battles will take yeah. place. Interesting. Okay. Is it, is it max? It's not max raid battles. They're called something. I think it's just max battles. Okay. Max out. Max out, go all out, go big. Oh um, yeah, that like so thing. stupid. I, honestly, like come on. It's great. What are you who, who are you paying two hundred thousand dollars a year to come up with that shit? Like come on. <laughs> I don't know who, but can it be me? Well, that's. Uh, I was telling Chris the other day. Niantic was hiring a uh, marketing director for and the <laughs> salary was over two hundred thousand dollars a year, and you have to of course move to like Seattle, Washington, and one other place. But it's like, um, sign me up, please. Is this your way of uh, submitting a, uh, submitting an application? Yes. Um, <laughs> I will not officially send you my resume. You just have to... You can listen to this episode. You can listen to this podcast and then um, send me an offer. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you heard her. That's that's the price. That's yep. what you got to do. $200,000. Um, what else was I going to say about Pokemon Go? Popplio Community Day. Yep. Coming um, up on Saturday. Is that the last shiny that needs to be released in that line in those three yes yes because we had a we had a rowlet we had a litten yeah and now poplio is the last of the okay three. very exciting i'm looking forward to that yeah we haven't had the gen seven shinies finished out until coming saturday yeah, so we're gonna get home. Oh we're gonna get three community days of the Gen Nine starters, yes. and then like years from now, we will get like Grookey Sobble score. Yeah. But yeah, which for me personally, I'm not too upset because I don't adore. I don't like the Gen. Actually, I like them differently. Is the best yeah. way I can put it. The Gen Nine versus Gen Eight. Shinies and all that, because the Gen 9 ones, Meowskarata and Quackwavol are pretty underwhelming to me. Mm -hmm. And then Gen 7, or Gen 8 rather, uh, Rillaboom, I remember I like, I like Cinderace is interesting, Inteleon, I don't. Uh, and it sucks too because Inteleon is like a color combination I would generally yeah. like. It's like almost like a purpley kind of magenta ish and with some white and some blue. I don't think it works well for Inteleon. Interesting. I haven't really seen it. I don't really know what the shinies look like for Gen 7, no, Gen 8 and Gen 9 even because I barely played Scarlet and Violet and I also barely played Sword and Shield. So. Yeah, that's right. Um, Quack, I mean, pretty much as far as I know, Gen 9 ones, it's pretty much they get the saturation turned down mm -hmm. some. So, like, Meowskarata looks more exposed, like, in terms of lighting. Yep. Uh, Quackwivel, it's more like a cyan instead of a darker blue, I mm -hmm. believe. Um, Skeledurge becomes pink. And I love Ooh, that. I like that. That's love nice. That. That's nice. Cool. Well, I don't know. Like you said, we, we, we won't be seeing those for a while, but yeah. um, at least... Um, what was I going to say? We have Ponyta Community Day coming up uh, in September. Oh. Um, you didn't? No. Yeah, that was uh, announced I haven't seen much about the, a couple weeks ago. I hadn't seen much for the September news. Yep. A couple weeks ago, they announced Ponyta. And so, of course, it's both forms. Oh, um, that's right. Oh, yes. You told me about yeah. this. Yes. Um, Galarian and it's Galarian, right? Yep. Galarian and original. I have shiny originals. So I am looking, I have no shiny Galarian Ponytas, so I am very uh, excited for that because the uh, Galarian Ponyta is just very cute. And then the shiny is, I like that kind of pale yellow. Um, so that'll be fun. If, if the pastel horse could get more pastel. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, we've got some, got some cool shit to look forward to in the month of September. I'm excited. I don't like when I'm not excited by Pokemon Go because that's one of the only things that makes me <laughs> enjoy <laughs> going outside. <laughs> Um, so, um, anyways, let's move on to, um, <laughs> 
the big meat of the podcast. Chris is Chris is pissing me. We're talking about it before going into this. And he goes, "Yeah, well, we'll talk about this, this, and this. Then we'll move on to the big meat." And I just, I'm sorry. I, I just had to say You're it. Not sorry. I'm not. I'm actually not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is what everybody's been waiting for. If you clicked onto this episode and you're looking for a movie review, you have to wade through 15 minutes of yapping because this is Team Yap. This is Team Yap. That's so what we do. You can't get away from that. Um, gotta pay the yap tax. Gotta pay the yap tax. That's true. Now, Chris, this is your favorite Pokemon movie or one of? It huge for my childhood because I had it on sure. DVD, played it on repeat forever and ever. Yeah, absolutely adore it. Song was stuck in my head. I mean, I'll, I'll kind of touch on my notes only because, like, I did. Um, I started my notes before I even got out of work yesterday because mm-hmm. I watched the movie late. You were pumped for it because I had to write down in all caps, very boldly Lugia's song because that <laughs> ever since the first time I ever watched this movie yep. stuck in my head forever. Like that is, that's the song that like got me to whistle. Interesting. Okay. Ever. That's or definitely, definitely the first song I ever whistled. Yep. Um, like that's how much of an impact it had wow. on my childhood. And then in terms of as a memory, it was definitely my favorite. Sure. Rewatching it, different story. Well, we have a podcast to get through. We to do, talk about we that. do. So I'm very curious to hear about that because um on my end of things, I have seen this movie before, have watched it as a child was not one that I really rewatched because I didn't have this one on DVD. I had the first and the third movie on DVD. Actually, I might have had, I actually had this one on DVD too. I just didn't like it as much as the other ones. And um, I had a similar vibe um, watching this movie. I was like, you know what? I don't remember almost, I remembered almost nothing from the Same. movie. Um, and um my overall verdict is it was good, but there are better ones. I agree. Um, I got through this one and I realized why I forgot so much mm. because I, I don't know, to me, it's not that the stakes weren't there because they definitely were, but I don't yeah. know, something to me with this movie, it felt I don't know. I just I just felt generally less worried about what was happening here. And yeah. also the villain. He was he was very I, threatening at first. Yeah. But then he's just kind of gone. Yeah. Until he's not. And then it doesn't matter anymore. Right. Exactly. Like he felt very secondary. 100 percent. I actually wrote. So. The way that we broke this down, and I don't, I don't think Chris took notes this way, but how, how I broke it down oh, was, yeah. you know, there are sections on our kind of notes um, Google Doc that we have, and so there's score, animation, story, favorite scenes, things we forgot about. Does it hold up as a movie, or could it be split into episodes? Does it feel like a good Pokemon movie? How did this movie perform versus the first movie? And then some behind the scenes background info. I don't have anything for that. That's just as a spoiler. Yeah, spoiler I did, alert. Um, I didn't quite um, structure them that way, but I was keeping these things like right. in the back of my yeah. mind. For me, it's just like that's <laughs> I just opened the Google Doc and put bullet points under yeah, because okay, it's that's easier. How, um, that's how so, taking notes works for us. Uh, under does it feel like a good Pokemon movie? Um, you know, I said that, yes, it's very classic, but because it has the kind of crazy storyline filled with legendary Pokemon, which is what most of the Pokemon movies, if not all of them, involve legendary Pokemon in some way. Yeah. Um, But I said it's not as powerful as others, in my opinion. And then I followed that up with villain is kind of weird and weak. (laughs) Because like you said, she was kind of there. Like, I mean, and they start the movie with him. Like he's playing chess with the birds. Like it it seems like this is almost like, oh, going to be an intimidating villain. Yeah. He's going to be a, a powerful presence through the, he's a very intel. I mean, they're setting him up as some very intelligent, 
collector type villain yep. with the whole chessboard theming he had there. Which is honestly dope. That but then was they, cool. They kind of lose the plot. They're like, yeah. oh, we don't really care about Just, this oh, guy. Yeah, like, he's here too, I yeah. guess. Because, and I mean, well, because even later, this is getting way ahead. I know. I got so excited. I mean, hey, you're, you're coming into this. If this you are year. watching this podcast. Spoilers for Pokemon 2000. I would hope that you have seen this movie before. Um, and if you haven't, please pause this. And I mean, you know us. And watch the movie. <laughs> we're yappers. We're going to be all over the place. Oh, yeah. Because like I'm about to bring up a moment from almost the tail end of the movie. Yeah. Um, there's the point where they, uh, you know, there's the whole crash landing. Mm-hmm. That... Until he returns to get Lugia. Yep. Is the last time we ever see him at all. It's just odd. I know there was, uh, yeah. Uh, it, Which is no, a like, shame, honestly. Like, There's no like ceremony to him. I, I don't even want to say really returning because it's not as if within the movie much time had yeah. passed. Um, but it's like him, it, feel, it felt like a return to the movie because yeah. he was literally just nowhere from right. the moment that they crash landed um i think in general if we want to talk about how it felt as a pokemon movie i yeah. would agree yeah still a pokemon movie yes. it was still decent but like i prefer the first one yeah i did too um i i think honestly what cinches it for me is like in the first one we had the moment of Ash walking out with all of the Pokemon mm-hmm. for that like final stand against Mewtwo. Um, I didn't really have a moment that I felt the same kind of way. No. And for that, for me in that movie, that moment pre- encapsulated Pokemon pretty well for me. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's the, you know, power of friendship. Yeah. Gotta, gotta catch them all such and such. Um, yeah. This movie is literally called The Power of One, (laughs) based around a chosen one prophecy, which is so played out. It's very played out. And it's also just kind of like, yeah, of course, Ash is going to be the chosen one. (laughs) Um, But I'm going to say I've never watched the Japanese version, so I'd have to go and watch it. But with the little bit of digging that I did, the dub did it better. Interesting. Um, and that is often not the case. Not at all. Not even close. Fascinating. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Would what, what you have more to... Well, let's jump back a little bit yeah. first. And let's... Why don't you give a very brief overview of the plot of the movie? Okay. Pokemon 2000. Uh, Ash and friends. No Brock this time around. We are, we are ditching... Ditching the cook uh, with a lady problem for <laughs> the sketch artist, the uh, uh, Tracy Sketch It. That's kind of his one gimmick. Yep. Um, Who, um, by the way, has like three lines in this whole movie. Yeah. Yep. Yep. At least one of them I quoted for my notes. So <laughs> I'll give him that. Um, but like, I don't know. If I was watching this movie, alone and never seen any other content with Tracy. And I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen a bunch anything else yeah. with Tracy in it in forever. Yeah. So could be spot on with this movie, but like from, <laughs> from what I gathered in the movie, like they use Tracy as just like, he's just happy to be there. Sure. He's dumb as a sack of bricks. He's just having a good time yep. the whole time. <laughs> um, dude has three total Pokemon. The, the low, the, Smallest team of the trio. Interesting. Yep. I didn't notice that. Um, or at least based on no, nothing else was sent out yep. throughout the movie. So, because um, I even decided I'll, I'll take notes of their entire teams. And mm-hmm. What's new with this one and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Pokemon Movie 2000, uh, the trio now with Tracy instead of Brock. We start on a boat. Well, actually, no. I need to go back before that because we start with our villain. Yes. Uh, who is in his sort of floating fortress castle. I was trying to think of some sort of pun in a way I could put it in my notes on like Howl's Moving Castle or something like that. But I just... I didn't. It did remind me of Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> I just didn't have the energy. Uh, we, got a, we got a calcifer in there somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> some obligatory references. The like AI robot that like is oh, way yeah. ahead of its time. Like. <laughs> um, so we start in with our 
new villain, Lawrence the Third, which is literally never said once in this entire movie. I nicknamed him the Collector because I had no. I was like, I literally in my notes I go, um, "Who is this man?" In the beginning, <laughs> with a bunch of question marks, <laughs> and uh, um, you don't really get an answer to that. He's just some nope. random guy. <laughs> he is a collector. You assume he's probably been doing this for a bit. Mm-hmm. D- doing what and how he accrued these resources. Uh. Yep. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's he's here. Uh, and I, I referred to him as L3 in my notes just to make it easier. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the lower third is evil. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, so our, our lower third here, he uh, is basically giving his exposition dump of the three legendary birds and Lugia talking about the prophecy, the, uh, what is it? Disturb not the harmony of fire, ice and lightning, et cetera, et cetera. I was going to make some joke about how I memorized the entire thing. But I <laughs> and don't have the energy for that. There. Um, going through this whole spiel. And I believe the opening scene is full on just, uh, yeah, it's him capturing Moltres. And I have, my, I have in my notes, poor Moltres with a sad tear face. Poor Moltres. I, in my notes, I started by writing L3 versus Moltres. Mm-hmm. And I then had to go back and put quotation marks around versus. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because <laughs> that and wasn't. It's, and like the noises that all three of the birds make are like so sad. Zapdos is just screaming its head off constantly. Yes. Like that bird is in pain. Somebody yes. Who <laughs> um, you knows is just crying this entire mm-hmm. movie. Like. So, um. Yeah, so he captures Moltres. Captures Moltres quite easily. Uh, he even makes he even makes a note of it. Huh, that was, that was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe from there, it just cuts right to the gang, Pikachu on the front of the boat. We have that classic Pokemon. Yeah, we have that classic title. Or no, that doesn't happen. Title card doesn't come till later. Title card well, comes... Uh, well, the title card happens, I think, after Moltres gets captured. It is after Moltres. Ca- okay, so and then and then it goes to Ash and Pikachu and Tracy and Misty and gotcha. whatever her name is on the boat. Yep, and and also so after Moltres that uh, with the title card we get to see the cool uh, Lugia silhouette under the sea. Mm-hmm. Yep, which is probably like one of the best visual things of this one of the best visual things in this movie um one thing that i will mention as we're going through here is like with the animation of the movie um of course it's your classic uh late 90s early 2000s animation it's got kind of a grain to it except for some weird modern computer animation that they were trying to use with with the ocean floor with the ocean floor with Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah. Oh yeah, the entire um, is good. Lord. Yes. Um, kind of jarring in my opinion. I was a not bit. a super big fan of that. Um, and and then also like when um, Professor Oak is talking to um, Delia about oh it's like beautiful weather we're having and then it starts raining and snowing and the clouds roll in and the clouds are like the most like modern like, computer generated like yeah. animation you've ever it is seen very it's like ew I, I think the one that took me out of it the most was the ocean floor yeah because it just looked like pockmarked clay yeah <laughs> yep <I was> like, <laughs> okay um. But beyond that, most scenes like under the sea, watching Lugia as it progresses. When Lugia comes through, when Lugia is in the scene and it's not just the water, that's cool. Yeah. But when it is just the water, it's like, okay, this is gross, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) Um, So overall, like I wish they had stuck with more of the classic animation style because I don't think they really did that with the first movie. They didn't try anything like super, maybe a little bit. The... Yeah, like I think um, with like I the explosions and stuff, like explosions, big shots of like the island as a whole probably mm-hmm. had computer imaging. Yep, um, but not nothing this intense. Yeah, nothing like that focused on. Because I didn't notice it as much with the first movie as I did. Like th- it stuck out so much to me that I needed to write notes about it. Right. So, um, anyway, so the we we see the classic. Um, Pokemon movie opening scene where 
every all of the heroes let every single one of their Pokemon out of out of their balls. And it doesn't matter what setting they're in. Nope. And like this time they're on a boat like. And so um, say that again. Small boat. It's a small boat. And um, there's a theme song playing. And actually, one of the things that I put under my favorite um, my first thing I put under favorite scenes was uh, letting Snorlax out on the boat and then it's starting to tip. (laughs) I loved that. That was really fun. Uh, And of course, I had to. I mean, going through this scene now, I did my whole write-ups of their teams yep. and all that. So new additions since the last movie. We've got Snorlax. We've got uh, Lapras. That's very much definitely a new one, considering that was a massive problem that would have been solved right away if there was a Lapras in the last movie. Taking them to the island. Yep. yep. Uh, let's see. Misty. We've got... I think her team pretty much stayed the same, except we've got Togepi now. Because we are getting into Johto. Yes. Kind of, sort of. There's literally three Johto, po- uh, four Johto Pokemon in this entire movie. I. It's so interesting to me because that was one of the things that I was thinking about the whole time. Because I'm not super big on like I didn't watch every single one of the anim- uh, the um, show, like all the seasons of the show. And right. so it's interesting because it's like so. I, so I, I guess the Orange Islands are like supposed to be south of Kanto. And yes, because the Orange Islands, I believe, was like a mini arc between Kanto and mm-hmm. Johto, kind of. And then, but like, your main featured legendary Pokemon is Lugia, who is a Johto Pokemon. And then the other three legendaries that are featured are the legendary Kanto birds, yep. um, Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos. And then what are the other Johto Pokemon that appear? Is Meryl one of them? Oh, that's right. No, Meryl. Meryl as well. So f- um, five total. So you have Lugia, you have Meryl, you have Togepi, uh, you have Slowking. Yep, Slowking. I... I <laughs> Either I had another one or I or I was counting Meryl and I second guessed myself. Well, it's so interesting because it's just like that was kind of in my head the whole time, because for some reason I thought that it was supposed to be more Johto based. But then you have all of the Pokemon that like. Yes. When we get to the droves of Pokemon that are coming they're, in, they're it's all Kanto. all Kanto Pokemon. Yeah. It's all like Onyx, Fero, Tentacruel, Venusaur, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's just an interesting kind of choice. And then. um so about halfway through the movie, um, my partner Jordan came home and he um, finished it up with me. And there's a couple funny moments with that. But one of the things that he said was um, the thing that um, always got to him when he um, watched the movie as a kid was, why is there no ho um, Valid. Yeah. ho was at the end of the very first episode of mm-hmm, Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Where's Ho-O? What's Ho-O doing? Yeah, what's, where is he? Like, what's going on? Ho-O's on his tower. He's too cool for yeah. us. <laughs> um, so, yeah. the just Ho-O's the- turning evolutions into dogs. <laughs> <laughs> if you follow that theory. I don't. You'll have to, okay, explain to the class. What does that okay, mean? Okay, we're really briefly, it's a whole thing. It was like, because, so the Ecritique Tower and Ecritique City, or is it called something else? Different Tower? I don't know. It's a tower, Ecritique City in Johto. Um, the the legend is like the, the Entei, Suicune, Raikou. They mm-hmm. were all originally each different Pokemon that were, uh, that died in the fire of the Ecritique, Ecritique Tower. I don't know. It, it's not the Bellsprout Tower. It's a different tower in Ecritique City. Three Pokemon died in the fire of the tower, and ho restored them to life as Suicune, Entei, and Interesting. Yeah. And people believe that, of course, because quadrupeds, water, fire, electric. They were EVs. Vaporeon, uh, Flareon, Jolteon. I see. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty cool theory. I kind of like that. Um, yeah, so, and then, but I guess it makes sense because the next movie is... If they're following the, the timeline, Entei. they're in Johto at that point. So it's yes, Entei it is, focused. It is, definitely a, Entei, it is definitely a Johto movie at that point. Um, I think Brock is back. Gosh, I should remember. Next I've one. seen this one enough times, but um, stay should, tuned for, for sure. the next movie review. Um, and actually, Brock is in this movie. Yes, um, he is. Which is kind we of fun. Brock cameo. 
we do. He is with him. Professor Ivy, who I didn't know existed, um, and he's, running around in the background. Yep, he's just running around the background trying to manage Pokemon. Yes, who are going crazy because of the disrupted balance with the three bird Pokemon and uh, Lugia, and which is making the weather go haywire. Disturb which, not the harmony of fire, ice, and lightning. Yes, which is why all these Pokemon are gathering and and um you know two, two of my um notes that i have here are so towards the beginning when there's when they're when they're sailing towards the island and when the weather starts getting crazy like um there's all of all of the Magikarp that swim past Team Rocks, uh, <laughs> Team Rockets yes, Magikarp I, ship. I had the Magikarp sub noted down. Um, a swarm of Magikarp around. Literally, I love that so much. And then, um, of course, Jesse's line of, um, "Do we have carp insurance?" I had to write that down. That was hilarious to me. Did, so I'm, gl- I'm glad you did. Um, and then, of course, when P- Professor Oak is talking to Delia and all the Diglets come and t- take his bike away. They, ju- they just steal his shit. Like, <laughs> they, I mean, they almost took him. Yes. So all of these, like, I love seeing, like, massive hordes of the same Pokemon on the screen at once for some reason. And this movie has a lot of that. It's just so <laughs> hilarious. What's it, what ensues yes. after? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I had this whole thing going through my notes uh, with, the, with the Professor Oak thing. He just came in like, wow, such a be- like you were saying, wow, it was such a beautiful sunny day. I have written down here, Professor Oak ruined it. Yeah, and then immediately, yeah. he you jinxed know, it. the storm comes in. Yep. Um, so let's see, we've gotten around storm, one of other teams. I would just like to say that, like, in the section that says things we forgot about, I put everything, LOL, because I didn't remember a single thing about this movie other than I knew the birds were in it. I knew there was a slow king in it. I knew that Lugia was in it. That was it. I Yep. I pretty much remembered about the same yeah. as, as you. I remember there being a villain. Um, I remember Lugia, three birds. I remember... Uh, the kiss. I did yep. not. I did not remember it, like how much teasing there was between Melody mm, and Misty. Mm-hmm. That was fun. That was cute. Um, I wrote down um, Ash immediately being named the chosen one as soon as he says he's a Pokemon trainer. Yep. As if like Misty and Tracy aren't there, who are yep. also Pokemon trainers. Misty's a gym leader. Yep. <laughs> and then um, I put down there. Uh, here's a kiss and then oh are you his little sister like that was yep. so funny that, that was oh. um, and then one other thing I want to mention before we move on is just like it, it was very fun to watch a movie a Pokemon movie that I don't have much memory of but at the same time, I think I prefer like I'm really excited to watch the third movie mm-hmm. because it's been long enough that I don't remember details right now. Right. But I remember the story. And so like and same with like Lucario and the Mystery of Mew, like and like the Celebi one. Mm-hmm. I remember like feelings that it gave me. And so I am really excited to watch those movies because um with that it's just it gives a little bit more excitement to it whereas this it was just like kind of like i was watching a movie for the first time again yeah because i didn't remember like anything about it (laughs) and then it was kind of underwhelming like yeah i honestly i feel you i and i mean i was trying to i was kind of having a hard time wanting to go between taking notes and just like just sitting and watching yeah i remember what's going on here but why I remember almost none of it is because it's almost all just moving around. Yeah. It's, going it's, places. it's not very linear. It's not, like it, the plot kind of jumps. And then like what we were talking about with, with L3, like, yeah. um, he, they, they should have, they should have stuck with that. I think that would have made the movie felt more like a movie and more well-rounded yeah. and more like of a resolution at the end because there is resolution at the end, but there's no like they've already gotten rid of the antagonist like a long time ago. Like, and he was never really a threat. So it's just, it was a little kind of, it lost itself there. I can enjoy when they take, they give us an antagonist that doesn't end up being the, final threat to sure. deal with that like they are a stepping stone yeah into what comes later right but with this 
it just they felt set like it they, up in that way. It, with this, they felt like they literally just threw him away. Yeah. And then it was just, oh, nature is real bad right now. Got to quell it. Yeah, because it ends up being that the real kind of villains are Artie Kuna, Moltres, and Zapdos. Because yeah, they're going wild fighting each other. Right. Uh, and Lugia has to come in and tell him to stop, mm-hmm. but he can't. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so let's back up again. Yes. So they are they're caught in a storm and they end up on Shamudi Island. Shamudi Island, where they are uh, assaulted by masked warriors. Yes. And by that, I mean they are approached by the island people who yes. are in the middle of their uh, annual legend festival. And uh, we learn that. Do we? What is the name of the boat driver that they're with? Um, That's a great question. There's a chick that drives them there. She does have a name, and she sure does have a name. <laughs> I, and I, I bet it's a good one. <laughs> I know the name Connie was thrown out there at one point. I think I don't know if it was the boat driver or the woman she was talking to. The woman she was talking to's name is Carol. Carol. And okay. That's Carol is Melody's older sister. Yes. And it, there's the the like ceremony that they do in this festival has like a featured person that like plays a song on a it's like an ocarina i don't really know what it is yeah, but there's, um, there's a name yeah I, I didn't catch that um and so carol is now too old to be the the center of attention in that ceremony and, and so, so it's her younger sister melody go figure who originally wants nothing to do with it it's, just, it's kind of funny they're all in their festival garb and then she's just like in sunglasses she just and rocks, like yep. a classic teenager and um but then she sees ash and hears that he's a pokemon trainer and suddenly she's all excited so yep. Um, and then where does it go from there? They, they do their ceremony, they do their little ceremony. They start having their little party and then Melody gives, starts giving Ash the whole spiel of what he's going to have to do. Mm-hmm. And Ash is like, no, I got to go be responsible and take care of this now. And she's like, uh, dude, like Just you can party, go in the, the morning, like have some like drinks, like smoke some pot or something, man. <laughs> like <laughs> these are children. <laughs> Remember this. This is true. Um, and then so Ash, like Chris said, is like, no way I'm going now, even though there's a massive raging storm and it's pitch black outside. And so, you know, why not just head out right on the water? Uh, boat driver lady there. Okay. I need to look up what her name is. Yes. Um, she is, she is just more than happy to take him right out <laughs> onto the water. Too. Yes. Um, and so, of course, they... They go. They go. And they and are... Get stranded. Yes. Because the waters are too rough. And then Melody Stanched. feels bad about sending them out there, even though she didn't actually send them out there. Um, and she ends up being the one to, like, start the charge mm-hmm. to go out. And then Misty and Tracy follow right behind. Um, and it's in this time more of the uh back and forth teasing with melody and misty is happening and uh misty had said uh he's a boy and he's a friend but he's not a boyfriend and then tracy just comes running up in between them like (laughs) you guys talking about me (laughs) is that the glow you wrote down oh that's too funny he just has no idea what's going on eyes wide and just smiling like an idiot (laughs) i love him (laughs) Um, so I would like to apologize to Marin, who Marin. is the name of <laughs> the person driving the boat. I am so sorry. I didn't remember what your name is. Uh, fictional one-off Pokemon movie, 2000 lady. We are, we are so deeply, sorry. Marin. Deeply sorry. Shout out to Marin. I don't know if I ever actually heard that name in the movie, um, which is why I didn't know what it was. <laughs> It was probably said once yep. when they like said hi, and that was it. Um, so they end up on what is the first island? Fire, Fire Island. Island. And um, at this point, Melody, Misty, what did I miss? Oh no, sorry, you're 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 good, you're good. Okay, Melody, Misty, and Tracy um, follow after them and also crash land on this Fire Island. Nice and perfectly like up on top of a yes. little pillar, to all perched up and ready to go, and then M- Melody starts having at the controls and and she uses the sail to fly the fucking boat this boat can fly if you know how okay girl that's not how boats work (laughs) i don't care what kind of winds you are working with that boat is not flying that boat is not perfectly zooming up some stone stairs hey you know what she did it and i'm impressed Uh, you know what 
that you're right. I should I should back off. <laughs> I should just uh, give props where props are due. It adds a little bit of humor to it, which I enjoyed. Ex- excellent boatsmanship. Yes. Um, and then so they follow them up and then Ash basically and I, I have on here somewhere. Um, so Pikachu is the one who actually like he steals Ash's hat when they're on the island and and Ash runs after them. And then he's like on the boat and Pikachu's like, we got to go. And um, I forget. Did he sh- did they show Ash getting his hat back in that? Chase? I don't actually know. Continuity. Because I thought about that when they're coming down the stairs afterwards towards he the altar. He has his hat. He has his hat back. <laughs> All right. Um, Pokemon Company. I'm coming. I'm suing you for continuity. 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 Um, <laughs> however you say that word. <laughs> um, and so Pikachu is like, when they get on Fire Island, Pikachu's running up the stairs and he takes Ash right to where the fire, um, what do they call that? Treasure. The fire treasure is. And I wrote on my list, on my notes, I'm like, how does Pikachu know where to go? Yeah. Like, dude, like, I, uh, hello. Like, Pikachu is some like strange driving force for Ash in this movie in that like he just knows. But I think... I, I mean, it's been a while, to be fair, since I've avidly watched the anime. I think Pikachu just tends to do that kind of thing. Yeah. Which, um, all right, whatever. But also... But it's like, what, this, are you psychic? With this one, I guess type. it's kind of like a, hey, legendary Pokemon mysticism bullshit. Other yeah. Pokemon are, like, in tune with That's true. Whatever. They know what's going on. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's kind of the best explanation yeah. I got for that. Um, and then Ash does get the treasure... And then our good friends, our old buddies, old pals, Team Rocket, they're back. They're here uh, and on the big screen, as James says. I found my and and I kind of feel bad saying this, but I found myself getting annoyed by Team Rocket in this movie. I know I was kind of upset with myself for feeling that way, but I was just like kept being like, okay, like until they like turned good or whatever and was helping them. I was like, bro. uh, Shut up, dude. I want to hear the rest of the movie. Like, what's going on? Like, well, then you must have loved when Ashful cut them off and was like, <laughs> I'll have to run off to catch this on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We should turn that into a promo for the station. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, that's an aside. <laughs> that's an idea we talk about off podcast. Yes. <laughs> Um, uh, and then I have to, sorry, I have to yeah. also then mention right away, because after Ash cuts them off, Jesse, I forget exactly what she says, is something like, uh, but now we've caught our ship or something like that. We've got to catch our ship. Mm-hmm. Something, something, something. They're going to steal Pikachu. Mm-hmm. And then immediately that boat comes up from behind them. <laughs> so, yep. So I put down, Jesse ruined it. She did. Professor Oak ruined it. Jesse ruined it. I got one more ruined it in here. Oh, God. Okay, I'm excited to hear what that is. <laughs> um, so they're all there. They're at the top. Ash gets the thing. And then all of a sudden, Zapdos is there. Zapdos is there. And I made specific mention of the music that played here. Mm-hmm. Yep. I never looked it up again after the fact. I'd meant to. But I don't know if it's Zapdos's theme. I don't know if it's just generally... Something. Actually, I made a note of that too. I said theme that plays when Zapdos appears is epic. <laughs> yes, I loved it. That guitar. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, oh, and of course, the whole score is completely different from the Japanese. Oh wait, really? Yep, I haven't. I haven't listened to it, but just in my looking up of because I wanted to look up a plot point. Yep. Um, the whole music and even like uh, Lugia's cry, like wow, the sound Lugia makes is different. Inter- I, that's an interesting choice that they made doing yep. that. Huh. Given, to be fair, I mean, anime then made a lot yeah, more changes in the dubs true. than they do now. Yep. Um, and so in my one of my favorite scenes is Zapdos claiming Fire Island because yeah. just the lightning is super cool. The animation is Char- awesome. Charging the stones. Charging the stones. Pikachu trying to talk to Zapdos is super funny. And yep. then Zapdos finally like saying something back and just like being like kind of hey, just like brushing him off. Stop. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> stop poking me type of thing. Um, so that was just, that was a really cool scene in general. And follow that up by Zapdos getting punked. Psych, you're captured now. Yep. So L3 Dang comes Team back. Team Rocket as well. Yeah, they, they all get captured and that's when Which, they're like. accidentally how? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like, okay, like there's one thing you're trying to capture and you captured two. Like, because they, 
even uh, make mention the AI says like there there is more in the cargo hold than was expected or yes. something like that. Yep. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Just casually goes to check it out. Like, how? Yeah. How are your systems so incredibly advanced and yet and you they don't, accidentally pick up extra stuff? And you also don't know what it is. And you like, have no <laughs> idea of knowing what it is. Like, come on, what's yeah. happening? Anime, um, anime, anime, anime. Yes. Um, and so one of the things I commented on story-wise is um, just, I called him the collector because I didn't know what his name was. And then he was taught, you, you know, he's ta giving his backstory and he's like, I've been a collector since I've had my Mew card. And I'm like, Mew card with a bunch of ex uh, question marks. Cause I'm like, what, like, is the TCG in this universe? Like, I, what does that mean? I wrote down L3 is a collector. Can't relate. <laughs> um, we have, we have too much in common with L3 than we would. Um, no, th this, this is like L3 after our villain arc. <laughs> or we, we are L3 before the yes, villain arc. Yes, yes. Uh, I and fun fact, I I used to own that ancient Mew card. Yeah, so Jordan ha did too because he he saw the movie in the theater and he got oh, that's one. Right, we did talk about this. Yes, one and I he was saying that that's an like he like I said he popped in halfway through the movie and I was like he's like yeah I had that and I'm like are you fucking kidding me and I I look online I'm like well I'm gonna buy it for a hundred dollars right now and he's like do not buy that <laughs> do not spend a hundred dollars on that and i'm like it's all right you won't have to i'm gonna go no, 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 no. <laughs> i think you can find it for cheaper that was just like the Probably. first one that i came across i honestly I like, just wish i'd kept mine around though just because yeah. it was cool yeah I, that's it's hindsight is 2020 when it's it comes to a lot of it's things it's just a super cool card yeah it is a dope card it looks really cool and then you see it at the end of the movie he like yep. picks it up um which like you you better be like you know, go get a lottery ticket several of those luck for it to out of your entire destroyed Still fortress be there and for it to just right there <laughs> right down next to you in perfect pristine condition yep. yep which i mean that's not well probably is for him at least the luckiest thing to happen in this movie yes um so that's a bit ways down actually i'll save that moving on the gang is introduced to the collector and then he goes away and does he let them out or do they just end up getting out? Um, it doesn't show because then, one way or another. then you are, see them again and they're, they're just out. walking around his collection room. Yeah. And, um, they, and I know there's a cut scene from here, but it has nothing to do with that. Oh, or at really? least a cut scene from the Japanese version. Not like, what, what floor. do you know what the scene was? Uh, it had nothing to do with like how they got, how they got oh. out of their cage. Um, it's uh, afterwards when they're freeing the birds. Yep. In the Japanese version, they have a, or in the Japanese, or an alternate version, because mm -hmm. that's that's what I found on IMDb. Um, there's an alternate version where uh, Tracy is going through his sketchbook doing equations <laughs> and <laughs> says something like, oh, and if you uh, overload it with uh, fire, ice, and lightning, it'll cause a reaction and explode. Interesting. Okay. Like, Which sure. I guess isn't Legendary really needed. birds on their own couldn't. Fight escape, off all yeah. And explode well, that's and another escape, thing. It's like, like, so they sent is able to free Zapdos, right? It's weird. I wonder if there's some sort of like my, power thing from the inside where they just my can't best get out guess is something. It's like it is hampering them from within while yeah. they're in it. Yeah, and then the bindings themselves are catered specifically to the bird. Yeah, so like that's maybe why Moltres is able to free Zapdos. Sure, yeah. But you know, although we do see them fighting off the. Yeah. There's too many questions here that matter. we will never know the answer to, like, um, because this movie is full of a lot of plot holes, um, unfortunately. Yeah, I, um, I, I don't know. They are just out of their cage. Yeah. Although, to be fair, at the same time, he has no reason not to let them out. That's really, true. He, he has nothing to do with them. Uh, that's true. Ultimately. And I guess he probably doesn't think that they're... Well, Missy does, like, f spout off the second he says something like, you're sick, you just want to collect Pokemon. And I'm like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Well... They're not collecting Pokemon like he is, to be fair. That's true. But it also They're made not me, shoving them in cages. It also like made that. me laugh because I'm like, you're shoving them in balls. Like, what difference does that make? <laughs> like, it's because it's occasion, like a though? six story mansion in their Pokeball or whatever. Like, <laughs> Hold on, um, display case. Yes, that's true. Um, and then I don't know when this scene happens, but they cut to Professor Oak a couple of times and talking about like the weather patterns and stuff oh, like yep. that and and the pokemon behavior and one of the things that i wrote down was 
he's talking about how the Pokemon are feeling a sense of impending doom. And so they're all like going to the location where they're feeling it so that they can like be helpful in some way. Yeah. But I wrote on my thing, I wrote Pokemon feeling a sense of impending doom. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> you almost pulled like a, a me with the L3 as a collector. Can't relate. Yep. Yep. That's funny. Um, so I don't know where, I can't remember exactly when in the sequence of things that comes up, but I enjoyed that. Um, so after that, they let the birds out and the birds escape. Uh, am I missing something? Uh, no, it's just something I particularly wanted to point yes. out. Uh, when they are freeing the birds after, well, as they're still attacking Moltres's cage, mm -hmm. Team Rocket goes in on Zapdos's. Oh, yes. And... Uh, my my note here is Weezing didn't deserve that. I know, poor guy. Jesse starts it up with saying, "Well, if things are going to start getting ugly, we might need Weezing." Oh. I'm like, what the hell did he? And do then to somebody else that? makes a comment about the Weezing afterwards when he just like falls down. I don't remember if it's Meowth or come, somebody. Come on, big, get back up, you big Baluka or something. Yeah. Like that. Oh, yeah. poor guy, he's so cute. It's like leave Weezing alone. He didn't deserve it. Justice for my. And it's also reason. when Arbok starts using Poison Sting, and Zapdos just kind of looks over and he's just like, "What are you doing, man?" Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, little bro? So that was funny, too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they do eventually um, free Moltres from the cage, and then yep. Moltres frees Zapdos, and then they both escape from Howl's Moving Castle. Yes. <laughs> uh, and while they're both captured, Articuno's whole ice dealio, that's kind of what's, at least I imagine, I, ca I can't remember exactly, that's what's going nuts. Mm. I feel like that's mm -hmm. what was happening, considering the quote that I have written here, because I had to specifically point it out, we cut over to Slow King. Yes. And he's just looking out at this whole big, and th beforehand, I th believe we already had the scene of, we've seen what him. a mess. Yeah, we've seen him a cute few times. But then the later scene that I wanted to specifically point out is when they show him again, it's all storming and terrible. It's covered in and, snow. And he's like, I could use pants. Yep, I wrote that down too. Slow King, I could use pants. <laughs> and you know, his, I, that was another, th I only have two lists on my, or two bullet points on my things we forgot about. And um, under my bullet point that says everything, I said slow King talking and I said he has a deep ass voice oh I remember that he talks did not remember that that's what he sounded like <laughs> So it was a little bit of shock. See, Slo Sloking was much more fresh for mm -hmm. me, remembering just because, mm -hmm. I mean, Sloking was always one of my favorite parts of the movie. And sure. Remains, Remains probably my favorite part of this movie. Yep. At, uh, now on a rewatch. Yep. Um, uh, and I mean, at the end, too, which I'm not going to say too much right now, but just, God. Um, and then another thing, all doom and gloom, weather is god awful team rocket still uh just i love i i know fair enough you're annoyed by him and I, I could see in some spots but uh they were talking about uh, something something that's the end of all intelligent life mm. on on earth um oh, i forget where it, how it like led over to it but essentially Meowth telling James you'll be fine yeah <laughs> I vaguely remember this quote I did not I, write that down I forget how the full quote goes but mm -hmm. it's like something something the end of all intelligent life something something you will be fine yeah <laughs> I mean yeah, like they have some great quips but sometimes when I'm like trying to get really into the movie and I'm not feeling like they're fitting in to the plot super well I'm like bro they're just taking you out of I'm it. like get out of here there are moments in the tv show there are moments in the movies where they do play a much bigger role and so like mm -hmm. um such as the first movie where they're in the um right. the, the like room where all the clones are being held and stuff and then um like in the third movie they when they're like to that. when they're like climbing into the fortress and stuff like that there's like more like it gets you deeper into the like lore of the movie other than like they're just there and trying to like they're actually using their perspective yes in those movies yes whereas this one it's like they're kind of there because they sort of always are yeah agreed so um all right um with after they're released, they go to Lightning Island? After they are released and Zapdos and Moltres break out, Zapdos and Moltres they start fighting. are pissed. And uh, I believe they start going in on the fortress. They they are oh, that's like... That's right. Oh, yeah. are attacking each other here and there a bit, but they are mainly just dogging on the fortress. Yes. Um, and 
they cause it to go into go into a crash. That's right. I forgot about that. Which leads to the luckiest land, crash landing in the world because they just so perfectly happen to land on a like decent uh, patch of land amongst mm-hmm. this you know, large amount of ocean water they have around them, these four islands that they are hovering around. Yep. Uh, just so happened to conveniently land on a decent enough spot on one of these islands. Um, this island also being Lightning Island. Also, this crash landing of the fortress destroys the altar that the treasure was in. And brings it right to Ash. He rolls right yep. in front of him as he gets off the fortress. Yep. <laughs> Luckiest crash landing. They were like, we don't want to animate anything on this island. Exactly. They're like, here you go. We're done. It was like, we want to skip an island. Yep. <laughs> we need to skip an island. We're running out of time for an hour and 20 minute movie. Mm-hmm. Which I forget. How long was the first one? Uh, 90 minutes? It was around the same okay. length. Um I don't remember quite how long it was. I just, I will say I was pleasantly, uh, pleasantly, uh, I, I shouldn't really say surprised. It's a bit older. More, I, I was pleased to see the runtime being only an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Like, so the section we... Modern movies are... Modern really movies perfect. are so long. I know. I was like, because Chris texted me last night and was like, I'm watching the movie. And I was like... Same. <laughs> um, and it was I more of a. I could feel a side eye in that text. It was more of a reminder of like, oh shit, I need to watch the movie too. Um, it was. Because I, um, I was making dinner and I was doing a bunch of stuff. And then I was like, oh, I knew I was forgetting something. And I was pleasantly, it was late at night. And I was pleasantly surprised as well to see that it was only an hour and 20 minutes. Because I'm like, okay, I can knock this out. I can still have a little bit of time before bed. This is perfect. Whereas if it would have been in like in two hours long, I'd been like, oh my God, I have to watch a two hour long movie like and take notes on it turned into a yap sesh episode yes it would have Uh, i'm glad it did not because this is uh long awaited but one of the things i said was it works well as a movie but i do feel like it could have been split up into episodes so that there could have been more meat to the story and more um less plot holes i think it could have been like a cool little mini arc yeah uh, during the like if they had saved it and did more I'm probably too far from the mic. If they had saved it and did it like within the run of Johto. Yep. So like for one, there's actually Johto Pokemon around. You can have me believe that this is a Johto based movie. <laughs> right. Um, and then split it up into like different episodes. Give us like first episode is getting to Shamudi Island and introducing us to the legend and mm-hmm. maybe we end on leaving for Fire Island. Yep. Although not even like like 24 minutes is probably too long for the but you, you get what i mean yeah. like there's there's decent enough like i mean there's clear ways to split it up I, you know getting to shimudi island fire lightning and ice island could each be their own 100 percent, yeah uh but yeah like i could see how they could split it up because they, they definitely left shit out so that they could make it fit into a one well, hour it, and it's one weird because they cut shit out, but I also feel like they fluffed it a bit too with the travel totally. time. Oh my gosh, they totally did. And it's weird because it's like when you think about it compared to the first movie, the first movie is about the same length, feels much more dense and much more like coherent and will give it has a resolution. Like, yeah, like it's all taking place in one location. Mm-hmm. Whereas this one, we're moving all over the place. Mm-hmm. And not handling it well. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, so where do we go from there? I, f- I forget what happens. So does Artie Kuno appear at this point? After the crash, they get the lightning treasure. They. I know Lugia. Maybe Lugia appears Lugia, first. Yes. Um, because I'm forgetting. There's some sort of a like water spout thing that happens. They end up on the boat. They end up on the boat again. But I'm I'm forgetting how that ends. Yeah. Or no, the boat is captured with them, right? Yes. Yes. So they retrieve the boat. I don't know where it ended <laughs> up. Probably some more lucky crash landing. Yes. Nonsense. Yep. But yes, there is a water spout that care that ferries the boat over uh, back to Shimudi Island. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have it as uh, Lugia saves the gang. Yep. Um. What? 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 Who did that? Who did the water spout? What? Couldn't have been Lugia. Um, not like the movie's about Lugia or anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then this is when... So the water spout carries them all the way from Lightning Island to Shamudi Island. 
and Lugia or Ash <laughs> meets Sloking. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the whole gang gets to meet Sloking and find the the stone altar. That's right. And so he puts the two treasures into the altar. The first two, and the- then Sloking just sl- slides right up to him, like, "So you're Ash." <laughs> <laughs> He's a funny character. I love him. Um, and then. Where does it go from? Th- this is where it gets hazy for me. because I have it here as Lugia appears. Yep. So this is the first time uh, Lugia pops in. I'm forgetting what actually. And Lugia can talk too. Prompted him. <laughs> yes. Well, that's funny because he shows up first, fights the birds for a bit, gets uh, beat down. Mm-hmm. Melody plays the song. Yep. Then he's revitalized, and that's the first time he speaks. That's right. He has, like, rainbow shit around him, and yep. then he um, shoots up through the water. Got to do the special magic m- music. Yes, yes. Um, and then he, he arrives and speaks to them and uh, basically confirms the legend for Ash and, like, yeah, you're the chosen one, kid. Yep. Uh, because... No, no go you go ahead. Uh, because the prophecy in this movie... Again, I do not have the entire thing memorized, but something, something, something um, uh, like Lugia's song alone will fail uh, lest the world uh, or lest the earth shall turn to ash. Yeah. Which seems daunting slash the most cliche edgy thing ever. Yeah. The world will like, the, oh, world, the world will the, turn to ash. The main character's name is Ash. Like. But then, yes, that's. <laughs> Then, then that's what ends up being the thing is like, no, they're not referring to Ash, lowercase A-S-H. It's Ash. Yes. Yep. And then he says, well, right now I'm really wishing my mom had named me Bob instead yeah. of Ash. <laughs> I, said, I turned to Jordan. I'm like, did he just say Bob? Like, <laughs> like, what a line. Like, I don't know whether to love it or hate yeah. it. Yep. Um, but it's a line. It is. Um, it is a line. I... So I looked this up yep. because I was very, very curious to see how they worded that in the Japanese version. Okay, because, interesting. I mean, his name is not Ash in Japanese. Yeah. It's Satoshi. Yep. And I was like, I don't know what kind of wording puns very interesting. they could do with that. Like, what, what's in the language? To It's not a pun of any kind. It is a generic chosen one prophecy. Oh. It's like an exceptional trainer. Oh, it's something. It's something. cool that they did that in the English. That is really cool. That they That's did why that I'm in like, English. I think the dub did it a little yep. better, even if it is still kind of, you know, cliche. It is, it is cliche, but I mean, it, but they, it's the hilarious at better. the same time. Yeah. Um, and. Oh, something else between the. Japanese and the English that I'm forgetting that I wanted to. Bring up. I don't remember. All Uh, right. Well, you think on that. And then one of the things that I mentioned, and and so Artie Kuno does show up before Lugia's first appearance, because I have it in order here. Right. That, and I like the Artie Kuno is just so beautiful in that movie, like with the the, like ice sparkles flying behind it everywhere. And then there's this really, really cool scene where um, Artie Kuno flies in front of the sun and it's just kind of like Mm. a silhouette of the bird. And, um, it's just super, super beautiful, super stunning. And um, I am a sucker for the ice sparkles because I like glittery things. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so Lugi is there. And then so now are, are all the birds fighting at this point? All of the birds... I think all three of them are fighting Lugia. Yes, that's I don't, right. I don't think they're fighting each other at this point. Okay. And then how and does Ash... Well, then Ash is looking out towards ice island is like how in the hell am i gonna get there because conveniently they're all fighting now also conveniently the entire ocean is frozen over yeah um and the four of them are all just fighting in the air basically in the space between ash uh, directly between ash and ice island um and it starts out with he he gets all confident, set, ready to go, takes his first step out into the snow and plummets mm-hmm. uh, and then cuts to he is on this like makeshift bobsled kind of thing being hauled by Team a few of his by a few of his. Pokemon. Oh, oh, that comes. That was another thing. Because um, I, I this was another one where I was like specifically mentioned the music because same. I didn't have many other moments that I was particularly I, it's music. cool that we were 
um, both drawn by the same uh, moments, like the Zapdos um, theme. And then I wrote the upbeat tune when Ash is going to Ice Island. Yes, on the sled um, and being pulled along by yeah, Charizard. That was pretty epic as well. I think it's Charizard, Bulb, or Charizard, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle, all the ones hooked up to it. I don't remember. I know Charizard because yeah. he's the first one to get called back. I don't remember, but, but yeah, the that music doesn't is cool last. On that scene. Yeah, that one doesn't last too long though. Gets disrupted by the uh, fighting of mm-hmm. the birds, mm-hmm. um, and then he's like, "Well, now what are we gonna do?" And the goats here the comes absolute goats. Team Rocket. They start coming in, and they they're doing their motto, but they're changing up. Well, it's the same like tune kind of yeah like like cadence yeah is that the word I'm yeah for, for their for their motto or whatever um but it, it's some something something they're they're good guys we're here to save the day we're we're doing something good for a change uh they're all stanced up on the macgyver life raft uh like hovercraft mm-hmm. kind of thing um they swoop in they they pick ash up and give him a ride and give him a lift thank you team rocket thank you team very rocket cool your- very nice I have it right here, all caps. Team Rocket saves the day. <laughs> um, uh, they came in clutch. They absolutely came in clutch because Ash gets to Ice Island. Um, I forget when or no, I think he, it's talking with Lugia before leaving. Mm-hmm. Lugia is like, uh, the, the ice treasure will only awaken in the hands of the chosen one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lo and behold, Ash grabs the stone. It glows. And from there, I think Lugia he, comes straight to Ice Island. He flies them back. Flies straight back. And then we get Ash running down the hill, Lugia coming down in in beside him. He's ready to hop on. And mm-hmm. I have written here, Ash rides Lugia plus the music again, mm-hmm. because this was like the last time that the music really got me. Yep. Besides the credits. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Um because it, it starts as like this epic kind of shift of Lugia's song. Yep. And j- continues on into this very epic song. I don't know what, <laughs> yeah. not really a better way to put it. Um, but I just thought that was very cool. And then Team Rocket jumping on Lugia as well and just hanging yeah. <laughs> on to his foot. Just there for the ride. Well, and then they make some sort of weird heroic sacrifice that isn't necessary. What do you mean? Lugia's being dragged down by the air resistance that they're causing by being on his foot. They did the heroic. Yeah, this big, massive dinosaur legendary Pokemon. It was can't. probably it was probably fine. <laughs> yeah, it was probably fine with all of them on it. And but. then they drop off into the ice water and um, appear with all of the Pokemon that are there waiting to help. I forget their whole thing, but they did another version of their motto yeah. here. Yeah. Um, more somber, like kind of saying goodbye. And then Meowth, just, they end it on like a, we'll just say, we're gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> and then into the water. Yep. <laughs> like, that okay. was funny. <laughs> um, and then after that, cut back to Ash and Lugia. Uh, it, it, home, we're on the home stretch, on the way to Shamudi Island, gonna put the last treasure in. L3 ruined it. Mm. That was my last. That's right. He tries to capture Lu- it, Lugia. Then, Lugia. Then cut in. We see the the. I forgot about that. The clamps or whatever the hell they yeah. are. Those devices that he uses to capture them. Yeah. Start spinning and coming in and going after Lugia. Lugia tries to fight him off. I believe Ash Ash falls off because uh, Misty and Tracy have to get him out of the water. Um. Lugia blows the fortress to hell mm-hmm. uh, wherever it was sitting off and crashed off to uh lawrence had taken aim and done his thing and then he's now no longer a thing yep um like he pretty much was ever since they crashed yep. but you know um bye lawrence yep you will we see him one be, one more time when he picks we, up his card you see him one more time and at that's the very it. very end when the when we're in our final scene, the yeah. wrap up. Um, so at this point, is Ash in the water? Ash, Ash is in the water. Lugia's taking the dive, uh, and then Misty and Tracy go S- go down, swim out go, to save him. Go to save him. Yeah. And you know what's so funny is, um, well, she says this line to Melody that's like, because Melody's like, I gotta go save him, and and Misty's like, um, 
I, no, I got to save him. Like, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was some sort of line. And then it cuts to her, like in the, just in the water, in these massive waves. And, um, Jordan and I say at the same exact time, we both go, damn, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we start losing our shit because we said at the same exact time. But we're just like, what That's are you great. doing, girl? Like you're in the water. Like there's this massive waves. I guess she is a water um, water gym leader, but it yeah, was just kind of. She said it herself earlier in the movie. just hilarious. She never scared out in the ocean. Yes. So um, Misty and Tracy save Ash and then. What I, do they then go they, and put the ice thing es- in the They thing? escort him up the steps. He has this whole little like struggle up the steps, but he's like, "No, I got to do this on yeah, my own." Yeah, and it's and it's right around here that we see Toj- Tojipi on Slow King's crown, which is I forgot about that. So cute. I forgot about that, and I feel awful. That was my that. last note under favorite scenes because I was like, "That is adorable." <laughs> um, and then so he puts the thing in the thing and. And then uh, we get energy uh, light show something or other with the treasures inside the altar. Melody comes up, plays the song again. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's pretty much kind of just all's well from there. Uh, the birds calm down. Yep. They uh, all the uh, the. Oh, right. This like green water starts flowing out of the altar and all that. Oh, yes. Essentially completely reverts. All the weather. All all the weather phenomena as if it had just not happened. Yep. Um, yeah, like it, it it pretty much just like, all right, and this movie never happened. Yeah, it was good. At that point, I checked out, to be honest with you. I was like, okay, the movie's over. Like, <laughs> yeah, this, I mean, it was because it was also supposed to sort of be our because like how we had at the beginning uh, at the end of the previous movie with all the Pokemon flying off yep. and leaving. It was supposed to be that same like, here's the end, the pretty shots, the, you know, the the fanfare at the end. Uh, sure. And where we get our shot, you know, of Lawrence that last time with him yep. picking up the card and then like where where he'll he'll start again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he will never be seen again. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't we will never see that dude again. You know what, Pokemon, call my bluff. Use him in a movie again. <laughs> Do it. Um, um yeah, So yeah. About all I had for the movie proper pre like credits or actually I don't think that was a post credits yeah because I have that after credits uh, after mm-hmm. that scene but just um because we always have to have a final scene with Team Rocket uh I believe most movies they end up stranded this one not so much they were just kind of ha- they just kind of had a scene with Sloking oh yeah they were like oh we oh, we yeah. finally did something good for once and nobody's going to get to know or nobody's going to know and then Sloking just comes up to them plenty of people saw you guys doing cool stuff they're all watching right just now completely breaks the just fourth turns wall directly to the camera Team yep. Rocket looks at the camera yeah that was was that how the movie ended <laughs> I believe that was the end, yes. Like a very unique way to end the movie. And I thought it was very cute, but it was also like, oh my God, like creepy. Like, <laughs> that slow king, I adore him and he's going to be my sleep paralysis. Yeah, yes. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, again, my overall consensus was You're I was right. entertained, it was all right. I, I, I don't feel like I wasted an hour and 20. No, but I do. I have seen better. I know there are better. Yeah. And um, I did a little, I don't know if you did a little bit of background research, but I did a little bit of research on how the, Tiny bit. it was mainly just the, um, the Japanese version. Okay. Stuff and uh, I did a little bit of mo- uh, research on how the movie performed um, in the box office like and critically at the time um, versus the first movie. So we'll, f- we'll finish out this review with that and then we'll, we'll shut our yappers cause we've been going for a long time here. Um, Just quickly before, yeah. cause I wanted to touch yes. on this, the songs during the credits. Yep. The first one, so beautiful. It was, I mean, literally Lugia's song, but had lyrics to it and all that. I, there was an original oh God, Japanese I didn't version notice, of, that, of that. I did not stick around and listen to that. And now I feel like a... I did. I stuck around. I listened to that and I was like, damn, I kind of want to sing that. That's fun. Shit. Then 
immediately following was I was not prepared for Weird Al to start singing off Pokemon names, singing Polkamon. Okay, I did see that on the Wikipedia. It was like Weird Al made a song Pokemon. And I was like, huh, I wonder what that is. And so apparently I needed to watch the credits. <laughs> I mean, if I, after this podcast, you need to look up this song. Yes. And okay. Enjoy that. All right. Um, fascinating. <laughs> I guess that was the time this was this came out in English in English around 2000. So, yeah. um, so the film was financially successful in the United States. It earned about nine million dollars on open day on opening day, um, which was only only less than one million dollars behind the opening day of the first movie. Damn. But um it only made $43,700,000 um, total, which was barely over half of what the first movie made total. So it did not perform as well in the box office. That's insane. Yep. Um, and then um, audiences that were pulled by Cinema Score gave the f- film an average grade of A- minus on an A plus to F scale, which shocked me considering that Rotten Tomatoes website's critical consensus reading said, despite being somewhat more exciting than the previous film, this kitty flick still lacks any real adventure or excitement. What it does contain is choppy animation and poor voice acting. Doesn't match up to virtually anything out there. Not the points that I would have um, yeah. highlighted on that um more like the missing like plot chunks and uh choppy storyline other than choppy animation and poor voice acting i don't remember having much issue with the animation. no i didn't have an issue with the animation or voice acting and then at the 2000 stinkers bad movie awards the film was nominated for the worst achievement in animation and the remake i know and the remake or sequel nobody was clamoring for however it lost worst achievement in animation to digimon the movie I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm, I'm so because like not only I, I don't feel that this one should have been up for I don't know maybe I have to rewatch it again now. <laughs> but like and then to put Digimon the movie as, as bad in. <laughs> Take it up with uh, the Stinkers like, Bad Movie Awards, whatever the fuck like that animation. is. People don't like good animation. So that was just kind of the consensus that I found on online. So it was interesting to note that did not do nearly as well as the first movie in terms of um, box office revenue. Yeah. Um, but again, like, I mean, I guess it makes sense considering our thoughts and feelings on rewatching this film. And, um, you know, I'm glad we did it. For sure. Because I've it's been many, many years since I've watched this. I'm so happy to have actually finally re yeah, this movie. For sure. Get a fresh lens on it. Yep. Um, it's just unfortunate what that revealed. It is unfortunate. And that's one of those that's one of the like caveats of like rewatching um old movies that you're really nostalgic about because sometimes you rewatch it and you're like like what the fuck was I on yep. when I was watching this? And it's like, well, you were on um being a kid. <laughs> so <laughs> um yeah, I um though I am really really looking forward to watching the third movie. Same because um, I I hardly remember any of that. I, I that one is my favorite. I remember I can wholeheartedly say that. I remember the unknowns being involved. Yep. I remember Ente being there yep. and talking and I remember the little girl who mm-hmm. goes through like the different iterations. That's it. That is all I remember. It's I like I the Pokemon movies. Involvement. Yeah, I, I, I can remember them like I can picture in my head them like climbing up and like going through the sewer system to like get inside the ice castle. Like um, and so I have a I have a soft spot for Pokemon movies that are sad. Hmm. This one was not very sad. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, so it, like, I want, I like the ones that like tug on the heartstrings and like play with feel the feels a little one bit way more. Or the other. I mean, no. like, yeah, I, okay. I gotta say probably yeah. besides like slow King making me laugh. Yep. Just because I really liked hearing the OG Pokemon narrator. Yep. Uh, when he came in at the very beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know what it was, but I was just hit with all the feels when he started. Yeah. Speaking. And like for me, like it was pretty nostalgic right away, like with the like s- song playing in the beginning, because I did remember that. And that's funny how like music can do that for you <laughs> or things just like the narrator. Like um, so in that respect, like I 
enjoyed watching this and rewatching it as an adult. Um, but the magic is not there in the same way as when you watch a movie like that when you're a kid. It's a damn shame. Yep. Yep. So, um, was there anything else that you wanted to add about the movie before we wrap up? Um, not really. I think it just cool. covered all my thoughts. Yeah. I So it's fun to do these movie reviews. I know like if you're watching this and you're like a film critic or like you are like a professional podcast watcher, like you are probably going to be like, they are all over the place. This is not a movie review. <laughs> this has these no people structure. Are weird. Like, like, yeah, this is, we're just yeah, we're just yapping. Folks. Like, just look at just, just from, if you're having those thoughts, just look at the title of this YouTube video. <laughs> remind yourself that we are not professionals. We are just yapping. This is Team Yap, and we're just having fun. Um, so. That being said, we thank you for tuning in. And if you have any thoughts on Pokemon, the movie 2000, The Power of One, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any thoughts about what you'd like us to talk about, put those down in the comments as well. And um, I don't know, we'll, Chris and I will reconvene about what we want our next episode to um, be about. We still have multiple different, we still have some around. models to build. We have um, more movies to watch and review more things to yap about um so it'll be a little bit of a surprise on what type of video the next yeah, podcast we'll is on the but edge of your seats. yes indeed um but yeah thank you for tuning in to this um episode number eight of team yap the pokemon podcast i have been your co-host emily brewer i've been your co-host chris levelette and we'll catch you next time thanks for listening